Why does your mask smell like my feet? Pick up some Mask Bright today. Hey there, Papper people. It's your boy, your favorite registered polysomnographic technologist. Let's talk about flow limitations. Now, when I'm doing pap therapy analysis with people, I get a lot of questions about flow limitations within Oscar. What are they? And should I be concerned? However, first, a quick shout out to the sponsor of our channel. That is CPAPsupplies.com. Head on over there now if you're not familiar with them. Cool thing about CPAPsupplies.com is on the top, they always have a header. You can check out what their latest deals are. You can get screaming deals on stuff. If you're not seeing something that you like, you can always use discount code LEFTY20. You get 20% off all kinds of stuff, masks, accessories. So if you're looking for a mask or some accessories, head on over to CPAPsupplies.com, put in discount code LEFTY20, save 20% off any mask or accessories that you're looking to buy. All right, check them out, they support this channel. So let's address flow limitations. Apparently it's all the rage in online forums. Check out your flow limitations. Flow limitations are super important. Oh, what do your flow limitations look like? Whenever I'm doing a PAP analysis, I hear this a lot. Hey, you mind if we take a look down at those flow limitations? And I always have to kind of do a So I'm gonna show you some examples here in a second, but I wanna keep this video quick. Flow limitations in general, we don't look at them in the sleep lab. It's not something that's important to us. What we're looking for is the overall breathing pattern and does it eventually result in an arousal after a decrease in the airflow. That's really all we're looking for. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it with some examples right now. So this is from a dude that was kind enough to uh, let me share his information with the world. So you can see here, we have the flow limitation kind of going along and then over on this side, it really, really drops off. So if we were to look up at this section, what does flow limitation mean on these machines? Well, it means two things. One, let's first look at a, what would be considered a normal breath. So right above here, we have no flow limitations detected. And you can see that the, there's a roundness to the top of the waves. A roundness, a roundness. And then what we can see down here, if we look at the highest section or highest segment would be like right here, you can see that there's a pretty good, let's zoom in even more, pretty flat on top instead of the roundness, like here's a nice round one, but the most of these have kind of a flatness on top. So, and if you look really, really close, you can kind of see vibrations. Uh, in a sleep lab setting, when you see this pattern where it's flat on top, often you have the snore microphone right above it. You'll see a snore pattern. The person's snoring typically. Um, we would never call that a flow limitation in the lab because overall, like I said, what we're looking for is a decrease in the airflow as it trends along that results in an arousal. And if we're looking at this, at no point on this page do we see any arousals in the airflow signal. It's all really nice and flat across. Very nice and flat. Let's go to a different example. Now this is also from a gentleman that I did a PAP therapy analysis with, very satisfied customer. And we have again, the flow limitation signal popping up loud and clear. Now if we were to zoom in on this, you can see there is a flattening to the top, but we don't care about that, remember? What I'm, what myself and other polysomnographers are looking for is an overall decrease in the airflow signal. And so that's exactly what we're seeing here, leading up to an arousal. So if we were to approximate over here, we see this thin gray line. You see how close these waves are coming to it. By the time we get way over here, you can see how much farther those are deviating from that thin gray line, as well as if we take the bottom, the trough of the wave. The trough of the wave is coming below that thin gray line. By the time we get over here, it's well above it. So we have an overall decrease in airflow really during this entire period. Uh, what we're finding is the flow limitation. We, we can pick it up. I can see it here in the flow rate. So to me, ultimately this flow limitation is redundant. Now, if you're looking at the flow rate signal and you happen to see flattening on the top, you can probably deduce that there's snoring occurring during those segments. Are they causing an arousal? If not, don't worry about it. Um, if your bed partner is complaining about snoring, probably want to increase the pressure just a little bit. Or preemptively, even if no one's complaining about anything and you want to make sure all possible obstructions are gone, go ahead and bump that pressure up. That's pretty much it. Here's what I'd say as a takeaway, the flow limitation signal if you see flow limitations and you want to check them out and see what's occurring for a long period of time, go ahead and zoom in on those sections 
and see if you can make sense of it. Hopefully all that makes sense and whether it does or doesn't, now's a great time to check out axgsleepdiagnostics.com and sign up with a therapy session with me to review your data. All right, jerk faces. Hopefully that was a helpful tutorial for you. I'm super curious. What do you think in the comment section down below? Do you think I'm crazy? Are you one of those people in the forums that tell everyone that flow limitations are super important? Blow me up in the comment section down below. That's what it's there for. I'm here for you. Trash me. I'm actually kidding, but if you want to do that, go for it. Oh, it won't hurt my feelings. Um, if you are interested in a pap therapy analysis session with me, check out axgsleepdiagnostics.com. They're fast, fun, and easy. I really personally enjoy them. I get to talk to you guys. We get to solve all of your sleep problems, and we have plenty, hundreds, if not thousands of satisfied customers. I'm going back to my roots and doing it, so I really enjoy it. It's therapeutic for me as well as you. And don't forget to pick up some Mask Bright at Amazon because your mask is stinky. And in case you forgot, check out CPAPsupplies.com, the sponsor of this channel. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Matthew Lilly, Mona Swearingen, Chung Chu Chen, Buddy Doris, Patricia Espalong, Ray Troutman, Sarvesh Joshi, and Stuart Hetherington, as well as a big thank you to all my other Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Little tiny thanks, buddy, for you guys.